Okay guys, welcome back to the Paymo channel and another instalment of the M52 B30 Stroker vid. We start this video picking up from where we left off the last one, where we were sizing up the crank, getting the plastic gauge done and making a real mess of the bearings. Before we get too much into the meat around the bones of this one, I just want to let you know that we're actually right, we're much further ahead than you see here. We've got a whole bunch of stuff filmed and we're in the process of editing it. I've got Natalie working away feverishly in her little office doing all the, uh, the hard graft of making these videos. And we will be releasing them a bit more regularly as we draw towards the end of the year and into the beginning of next year. So back to this one, we uh, at the moment you can see that I'm putting some nice lovely Permatex assembly lube onto the, the main cap bearings. Uh, and I'm about to put the crank in. So this part was pretty scary for me. I was worried about knocking the bearings and making a mess of them, understandably, from my previous experience. But thankfully, it was a bit unfounded. I didn't have any problem putting the crank in, and it laid in there absolutely lovely. So we now get to the point where I am thinking about putting main caps in. The crank is essentially now laid into the block, and it spins lovely and free. What you're going to see me do here over the next few seconds is just putting the other half of the bearing caps into the main caps, so the bearings into the main caps, and then I'm going to individually lube them up and put them into the actual engine block itself. So there's seven of these to do, there's six regular ones and a thrust bearing. Okay, so here we go. This one here is a thrust bearing. Slightly different. It's got some walls on the side of it which stop the crank from moving backwards and forwards and take up any extra play in the crank. As with any of these bearings, you have to put them in and you've got to level them up so that they sit in the actual cap, protruding ever so slightly out, but evenly on either end of the bearing on the mating face where it's going to touch the opposite bearing. They actually crush together from what I've read once they're actually installed and torqued up. So we now take them and I start to lay them onto the crank inside each one of the journals. Okay, so I'm just laying the caps in now. If you look very carefully, they're numbered on the back end, number five, number four, number three, and so on, if you can see that. But I learned a little tip that the, the little locating tangs for the bearings will always match the locating tang on the top cap as well as the bottom one. So I'm being extra careful, as you can understand at this point. All the caps have been cleaned, all the bearings have been oiled up. I'm going to leave the thrust bearing till last. And here's the thrust bearing. I've greased up the outside of the thrust bearing as well as the bearing surface itself. And now what I'm going to do is put the bolts in so they're kind of located and then I'm just going to tap the caps home. It shouldn't be getting out, I tell you, at that point, man. Oh, fuck right off. I don't want to be fucking taking the caps up again. All right, I'll try tapping the cap in first. As I'm putting these main caps on, uh, they go, they're quite tight fit into the actual block itself. So I didn't want to really hammer on them too hard. Um, I just gave them a little tap home and then I started to work the bolts in. But quite quickly I began to get tight bolts and these bolts are going into that aluminium block so I was a bit cautious about that and I thought this doesn't seem right. So there's a little bit of me messing around here where I'm trying to decide do I use the bolts to draw the caps down or do I get the caps all the way down and flush before I put the bolts in. And kind of either one of those wasn't really the right option. What I end up doing as you'll see here I'm about to remove I think that's number three cap and take that out because I'm really not happy with how loose that is. Now obviously this is pretty scary for me. This is pretty close to where I'd gone wrong before. But this time a lot of tapping with a hammer and I made sure the cap was really nice and loose before I pop it up. And it comes up here without any problem at all. So we've got that down to a T, thankfully. And I just run these bolts back into the bolt threads just to make sure, you know, has something gone wrong with the threads? No, nah, they're still clean. The bolt still goes in nice and smoothly. So now, nah, there's nothing wrong with these thread holes. I come to the, the assessment that the cap is not straight and it's binding on the bolt as I'm trying to screw the bolt in. So the cap, I've decided to put them on, get the threads just done up a couple of turns, so they're kind of used as locating pins almost, and then tap the cap flush. Once the cap is flush, you can then run all the bolts in with a ratchet, and then you can start thinking about getting the old torque wrench out and doing your torque settings. Uh, we'll mention those in just a few moments. Before we get to that part, I will just say, as I was tightening up these caps, I decided to work from the middle outwards. I didn't really find any concrete information whether you should go from the middle out on a main cap on a M52 engine, or whether you can go from one end to the other it made kind of sense to me to work from the middle out to spread that load out. So that's kind of what I stuck with. It seems to work for all sorts of other stuff. So I thought we'd go with it from here. And as I torque up these bolts, I get a little bit of um, red marker ink or red sort of, it's like a, what do you, how do you describe it? It's a bit like a nail polish. 
the stuff that I've got now is meant for doing this job though and I just mark up each one of these bolt heads once I've uh, once I've torqued them that way I'm never going to forget one I know what I've done and I'm not going to miss anything and then really regret it later on down the line okay guys so the next process after putting the crank in is putting the piston rings in and uh, checking the ring gaps now I don't believe I have to check the ring gaps because I think the piston rings that I've got and because my bore has not been honed I'm not going to have a problem but I'm going to just check one just to be sure. So I'm taking the top ring here with its, it's got a top marking upwards. These are Gutz, Gutz piston rings, look like that guys. And there's part number there for the M54 engine, these are M54 rings. So I'm going to drop this down into bore number one or cylinder one vertically and then I'm just going to rotate them round. And I'm going to use the piston to actually square them off inside the bore. Right, so I've got them square on the bore, and I believe I'm anywhere between 0.15 and 0.17. This is a 0.15 feeler gauge, and he goes in there relatively easily. This is a 0.18, so this would essentially be too big if this goes in. And he doesn't go in. Oh, he just goes in there. So I'm going to run with that, because I think that piston ring gap is plenty. There's enough gap in there to allow it to expand. I'm going to bang the rings on and then I'm going to start putting the pistons in. Okay, so here we have the piston rings, M54 ones. The bottom ring is the one that's debatable. Uh, lots of people make uh, conversations about them not being any good because they're a two-part rather than a three-part ring. I've decided to go with them. Whether or not I've made the right decision will come through in fruit itself in time but I believe that they're probably going to do the job perfectly if I bed them in correctly. With the bottom ring, I found the easiest way to put that in was to put the spring into the ring gap first and then take my uh, piston ring expanders and then just pop the ring around it. And you kind of work the same process all the way down, guys. So you put the bottom ring on first, the middle ring, and then the top ring. Just making sure that you spread them out as wide as you can. You don't want to scrape the side of the piston as you put these on or you'll create a point where you have a weakness or a point for failure. And I'm a bit worried, obviously, about breaking ring lands and things like that. So I was just trying to take my time with this and make sure that I don't scuff the outside of the piston at all. And we'll just take our take our moments to make sure that the ring is in place and it's covering that, that spring itself properly. Now, being a novice at this, one of the things that does surprise me is how wide open the rings sit and spring open when they're not inside a cylinder bore. There's actually quite a lot of force on these rings when they're in the bores. So... Um, it, just something I'm not used to seeing because I'm not an engine builder, you know, this is my first proper attempt at doing this process and as you put the rings in it just surprised me how much they sit outside of the actual ring land itself but, you know, once they've been compressed and they've gone in the bore, they should sit in there nice and tightly, keep the ring gap as it looked a few seconds ago not cause any blow by and give me good compression so on goes the top one and then obviously we need to just separate those and I'm going to talk about that in just a few moments. Okay, so at the moment I'm just putting in number three piston and number four. I've already done one and two. The caps are basically in now. They go in greased as far as I can tell. And I'm just nipping them down just to get them to connect. Making sure that the cap and the rod, there's numbers engraved on the sides, making sure that they match. On one side there's numbers, on the other side there's not. So on this side here, you won't be able to see this, there's some numbers stamped on the side of the rod and the cap, just down here. They've been honed from the factory together, so I'm trying to keep them all as they came out of the factory. Just nip this down a little bit, and then I'll rotate the crank and just guide the next piston up and towards it. I've already greased up the cap for that. So I'll let the crank come down to meet the... Uh, rod. I'm noticing as I get further into the process it's getting a little bit tighter to turn the crank because obviously the new rings are now in there. These are new cap bolts. These ones are smaller threads so therefore being a torque to yield it's much more likely these are going to stretch than the main cap ones. So I have bought brand new bolts here. And the tightening torque for these is exactly the same as the main cap bolt, so it's 20 newton meters and then 70 degrees. I will say, through the process of doing this, I don't like using this degree wheel thing. I'd much prefer a, a torque rating for these, but I don't have one, so you've got to be... I have to use what it's designed for. 
Okay, so 70 degrees again. So number five journal is quite far away down the very, very bottom there. Number six is quite high up, so I'm going to do these ones individually. What I don't want to do is obviously go down there with the con rod and crack the, and I hit the crank and put a score in the crank. So next one will be number five. So right, so the first thing I'm doing is taking the rod and I'm just moving the piston rings so that they are sort of like a Mercedes sign. So the gaps have to be separated one, two and three. That's what I've kept reading everywhere. So I've got number one oil scraper ring at the bottom there. I've got the second ring just off at about 120 degrees and then the third ring I'll put a wee bit further over. Right, so now the rings are apart. I can then take the old uh, shitty ring compressor, which is doing the job. It's definitely not the best piece of cat I've ever bought, but it seems to do the job all right. You've got to get it really tight, that's something I've learned already. And I saw a tip from somebody using a ring compressor and they said to not go the whole way down the piston, so that's basically what I'm trying to do, so get the compressor on there, try not to move the rings too much and then tighten them up seems to always want to go on at a bit of an angle depending on how you're holding it but I'm just going to pull it up a little bit so it's about there there's a bit of a gap and then crank them real tight, as tight as I can get it okay and I just want to put a bit of lube on the bearing Paying close attention to the orientation of the piston, again the arrow points towards the front of the car, exhaust valves at the back, it's on the crown here. And then a little dash of oil, just to help the ring go in. And then I want to just very carefully put them in nice and straight. Give them a tap home. He's in. Okay, so I was getting all nice and comfortable there and I realised I hadn't put on the, the little bracing triangular plates. Yet another pull fuck up. If this engine runs, I will be blessed. So I'm now having to take out the main cap bolts, put these little plates back in. Okay, so I'm just looking up torque settings on the oil pump nut, which I have got my hole drilled through and my stainless steel safety wire that I'm going to wire it together with. I've just read that you can talk into 25 Newton meters, so I get that as 18 foot pounds. So I've got a foot pound torque wrench here left-handed thread obviously and I need to hold the crank somehow to stop it from rotating so I'm going to block it I think in here right I'm not really going any higher than that because I think oh, that's plenty tight enough that's fucking he-man tight I'm not confident with that torque wrench on horizontal so I'm going to live with it like that because I'm going to be safety wiring it so I'm going to go through the hole here and what I'm going to do is pull all the wire through and then I'll start the twisting process Okay, so it looks like I come off the nut and go up round one of the sprocket parts pull them nice and tight and come back and start twisting again up here Okay so that's pretty steady now, now all I want to do is trim off the excess and fold it back up. So at that point, finally after a lot of grief, the bottom end is back together and I can now turn the engine over and start concentrating on putting the head gasket and the head on. Let's see what fun and games that brings on. Okay then guys, so that is pretty much wraps up putting the bottom end together. Um, just before I move on from this video, I want to say it was extremely satisfying, if not a little bit bum cheek squeaking. So I obviously was concerned with the way I was going to deal with the bearings and how all the pistons were going to go in but the feeling of it all rotating feels absolutely excellent and I'm pretty confident now we can go and put the head on and take on the next big challenge which is the head bolts. Uh, see you again for the next video guys, thanks again for watching and stay tuned to the Paymo channel. As I said we'll have much more of this content coming, we're way ahead of you but we will keep you clued in and we'll keep the videos coming thick and fast. Thanks as always guys, that's it for now, Paymo out.